first time I was in Joe Zalitsky's studio, he was still on Broadway. Um, and Joe's used to work all night. Uh, he'd get up, I guess about four o'clock or so. Um, work all night. And so an early point, early day appointment with him was 10 o'clock at night. And I was staying with my parents on Central Park West, and I didn't dare tell my mother that I was going off for a 10 o'clock appointment, so I left the house at a reason, more reasonable hour and had to hang out at Macy's for a while, which was the only place that was open that late. Um, went down to Jules's, and we looked at the painting that the museum I was working for was buying, which was pretty spectacular. And then we sat in the living room and chatted. We knew a lot of people in common. We had a beautiful Himalayan cat called Caro, which Jules told me Tony Caro thought was named for him, but it actually was, you know, Caro Mio, but never mind. And I was very honored that Caro sat in my lap and um, wanted to, it was time to go home. And, uh, went to stand up and realized Carl had completely unbuttoned my shirt. This was something we did. So I'm trying to button and be professional. And um, this is obviously something that Jules was counting on. And um, it, was not, it was not the most auspicious beginning, but uh, I assured him that I was much too old for him, so which he, which he agreed. I think I hold it was on that, 30? And uh, we, we resumed a professional relationship. But uh, he was a wonderful friend. And uh, it was in the last years, um, we came very close to him, uh, very friendly with his wife. And they, my husband and Jules were very good friends. We'd go up every fall to see the summer's production of painting in the studio in New Hampshire. It was always a sort of magical time because you, you could only get there by boat. Christina would come and take you across the lake. And, uh, we'd usually arrive late afternoon, so Jules had just gotten up. And we'd have dinner, and then we'd go to the studio, and we'd look at all this work. And, uh, and we'd go to bed, and he'd go to work, although he did confide that in the last years he was watching a lot of late night television. He wasn't getting as much work done as he thought he would. But I shouldn't tell anybody. And then in the morning, Jules would still be asleep. We'd get up, we'd have breakfast, do something with Christina. But there were always these notes. There were these wonderful notes that he'd leave. Um, and uh, just Interestingly, he was, you know, when he was diagnosed with lung cancer and um, surgery, chemo, what have you, and then had an exhibition, which was terrific. I mean, it was work that we'd seen up at uh, Bear Island. And I remember he said, you know, I can either sit around and feel sorry for myself or I can work. And he chose to work. And he was so resilient. He, he seemed to bounce back every time. We never, we thought he was going to last forever. I mean, they were treating it like a chronic disease for about eight years. And he just, here's this you know, profoundly life-changing experience, and it changed him. He became a very giving, much more, um, much more, he was always warm, but he was also more self-involved, and he became just an extraordinary guy. It was a very wonderful thing to watch. And I had the pleasure of working on a big Olitsky retrospective, which is traveling right now.